Hello and welcome to another episode of TFB Thinks. I'm Russell Doleg from Unity Upstate in the FSM here with Sammy from Chuk. And you from Chuk. Today we'll be talking about more discussions and news and other stuff as usual. Keep in mind that these are just our opinions. Um, they don't necessarily reflect the opinions of TFB and its other members. They're just ours, our own. They don't really matter. <laughs> yeah. So don't sue us. <laughs> um, got quite a bit to talk about today. So Sammy, if you want to introduce our first topic. Right. Um, we have a few news items to cover, and then we'll quickly jump into uh, video reviews. Okay. So first item on the agenda is Oregon healthcare mm. for COFA migrants. Mm -hmm. It's been passed. It's not. There's still, it's, I think it's going through Ways and Means, the committee now, but it's been passed. They, they gave it a green light. So now it's um, it's almost all the way through. Yeah. So this is different from the one they passed last year? Uh, yeah, I think the one last year they said to go ahead and, and research. Now they've researched it and, and then they've approved it. So now it's going to go to see if they have the funds to cover it. I believe that's how it's going. Okay. So, so like yeah. Oregon kind of like opposite of Hawaii. Uh, you can say that. <laughs> Not opposite, <laughs> but what, it, what Hawaii initially had in mind, kind of. Yeah, it was, uh, yeah, I, I guess, yeah, you get both of you guys are right. Like Hawaii had kind of the same idea and then they decided otherwise. Now they're doing something else. <laughs> Oregon seems like it's going down the same path, but you know, why why is why are they so different? Oregon, I mean, what's the difference between Hawaii and Oregon that Oregon can do this and Hawaii can do it? Can't and uh, money? Yeah, I had this conversation with someone who lives in Oregon, and they said it's because Oregon is such a big state, mm. and there's a bunch of people in Oregon that most. Oregonians <laughs> don't even know that there are Micronesians or Micronesians at all. So like it's, they can't, and to be also fair to the team that they have over there, Kofa Can, or is that, is that what they're called? The, the, um, the Can Network <clears throat> over there? I know they're, they have a group called, um, I believe it was Micronesian Community. We'll find something. them and we'll link them. Yeah. yeah they're, to be fair to those guys, they've been doing great work, you know, and not to take away anything that yeah. the Kofa can here has been doing. They're they're going up against a lot more because Micronesians have been here longer. Mm -hmm. uh, we're more visible because it's a small place and people and we're always on the news. Yeah, almost always on the news. And a lot of the news items are negative. So this is like a bigger target on our backs or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the the word Micronesian here is almost a negative word. Mm. Yeah, like people don't want to associate with that word. Even yeah. our own people. Yeah, like we don't want to take on our own identities. That's a huge topic for another <laughs> another, <laughs> another podcast. podcast. Yeah, Obviously. we'll get to that. Yeah. You know, you guys have anything to add to the Oregon healthcare? Uh, it seems like it's gonna pass. Yeah. Good job. It's gonna go through. My move to Oregon. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> that, that's the thing. If if yeah. this does go through or are we gonna see more people moving to Oregon yeah. then I've already heard about I already know of one family who's said that they would they're thinking about they're contemplating moving their entire family over to Oregon because it's much better up there. I, besides I, from the weather. Yeah I know a couple of friends there too actually they've been seeing more and more um micro well trickies to be specific. Yeah. More of them around like Portland and uh, Vancouver, Washington area, yeah. like Vancouver. Washington, yeah. Yeah. I saw quite a few when I went up there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's also tied into this conversation. You, you mentioned Moving Hawaii. Up. You also mentioned Hawaii, and then it's 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 interesting. A few maybe last week or a few weeks ago, there was a UH research. Uh, they they figured that more Kofa citizens are sicker right, right, right. Mm -hmm. they have more younger. serious illnesses and they're also younger mm -hmm. going into the hospitals this is study specific on where they hear and then 
they're sick or did they just come like arrive? That's a good sick. question. I, I didn't read through the whole thing. I, I just read excerpts. But the the bottom line is the Kof, the the Micronesians going to the hospitals are younger than normal uh, patients and they're sicker, sicker than normal patients than the average patient. I wonder if it's you know like a immune system thing or maybe just like the way some of them are living like our, like our, our diet and all yeah, or imported foods and stuff you know like the ones coming here though and then you know like don't have a lot of money okay and just like nutrition yeah that's i'm sure that i'm sure that plays a big role in it yeah, yeah. I've actually heard something okay. about in the past few years there's been a case a couple of cases of um, vitamin A deficiency with especially in chew that's a, what I've been told by a couple of people and um, I think there are some groups that are trying to you know educate people on that issue I'm not sure much about it but I've been hearing that that's an issue right now so it's diet it's, it's, it's a diet thing. Diet thing. I believe it's like a diet the thing. The cheaper foods are not always the healthiest or the most nutritious. It's true. But then the cheapest thing is our locally grown stuff. Yeah, that's right. And then I guess... Uh, I'm just saying over here, though. Yeah, that's right. I, I, I personally think it's the people who are moving out here. Yeah. They're coming out here sick. And I think that can be tied into our history of being a trust territory. I I can't remember what we read back in school, but I remember there was a time when they said that during the TTPI times, no other country could go into uh, the TTPI, the trust territory. So like we, the only other country was the US. So That's like, <laughs> yeah, the only thing that they imported in there were canned goods. Yeah. So that was the beginning of our dependence on canned goods. And you mentioned Chug a lot. Chug was one of the heaviest hit states in all of Micronesia because they had to bomb the hell out of that place because of the military presence of the uh, Japanese. Yeah. Operation Hellstone. Hellstone, yeah. And then that really destroyed infrastructure, farmland, all that stuff. So immediately we had to start depending on imported stuff. And, you know, I'm not saying that that's an excuse. We, we should use that to point a finger and blame it on the U.S. Right. But it's, it's, it's always, what it's what happened. It's mm -hmm. always important to know what happened and you decide how you would want to, like what you take from that information. Yeah, we may have briefly mentioned this, but like why, you know, why raise pigs when you can go get spam? Why go yeah. fishing when you can get in a can? Yeah, it's uh, accessibility, yeah, it's quick. It's a... Uh, Change of culture, change of change pace. Of lifestyle. Yeah. Ah, you have everything else. We started talking about pigs, guys. Uh, <laughs> talking about health. <laughs> yeah. Let's move on then. Uh, so we mentioned migration. Mm -hmm. Recently, there was an article coming out of Arkansas. Was it Springdale? I think it was Springdale, I Arkansas. It was Springdale. So the island of the Marshalls. So. I think there's a Marshallese population of 7,000. I'm not sure. Yeah, that's 7, a pretty big, Marshallese. Yeah. yeah, that's a huge population. That's almost the population of all of Yap. Mm. <laughs> anyway, so there was an article that they had that mentioned that Arkansas and Springdale, specifically that town, should be expecting or preparing, getting prepared for an influx of Marshallese citizens because of climate change. And so we were yeah. talking about a lot in one of our previous podcasts. Yeah, yeah. You mentioned because like climate change, you gotta start talking about immigration mm -hmm. a little bit too. It's not just a problem for the island; it's gonna be a problem for. It's a global global issue. It's yeah. everybody. People think they're gonna be like immune from it, but mm -hmm. it's gonna affect everybody. We're gonna see it <laughs> a little bit. Right. I, I remember. Uh, I think it was Tony De Broom who keeps mentioning right now there is a migration crisis in Syria, but it will pale in comparison to the migration crisis that will come out of global warming and mm -hmm. climate change in the in the tens and tens of millions, probably. So it's like not even a man-made 
migration crisis, like mm. <laughs> climate change. Actually, Mother Nature. Oh. Jesus, man. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, man. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, you guys have anything else you guys want to add to that? It's going to be interesting when when uh, relocation is the mm. if it ever has to be the right. Oh, you talked about that also, and it made me wonder, like. Because most migrations like happen like little at a time, but then this one it seems like exodus. Yeah, like a mass exodus of <laughs> a group of people. So that could be also difficult for the receiving country or the receiving yeah. state because you could probably handle a few people coming in one time, right? Like, but everyone arriving at one small span of time that could be. A, and the thing is too though, like our status. As Kofa citizens, mm. because we won't actually be refugees. Mm, yeah. We're actually allowed into yeah, legal, legal non-migrants. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that's 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 great, also. <laughs> and it might it might reopen the conversation of uh, amending the compact and yeah. erasing visa-free accessibility. Yeah. They just recently did that thing where they um give priority housing to. Yeah, they're looking into that. Uh, what was that Homeland Security or something? Yeah. Oh wait, no. Oh, Excuse I me. I think yeah. it was yeah. the Bardello. Yeah, she introduced it. That's right. She introduced <laughs> the bill. Yeah. Passed unanimously in the House. Everybody voted for for 427 to nothing. We couldn't vote on a <laughs> veterans bill, but yeah, <laughs> nothing to lose there. Yeah, yeah no everything to gain. Lost. <laughs> no, no votes lost. <laughs> uh, anything else? That's depressing, man. It is very depressing, but <laughs> it is. But like um how is say for example Marsh, the marshallese government how would they manage the you know moving people from back home to the mainland i don't how know do you think the, how it's going to be done i think there's going to be like female money tied up into that i'm not sure but lottery the, the way i'm thinking about it now is <laughs> like it's not the government paying for people to move like individual families and individual households are just deciding to move on their own. Yeah. So if it's, but it's I think he's talking about like relocation. Yeah. yeah like yeah. because the relocation thing, um, they said they're not even considering that. The efforts are going into uh, getting ready for climate change, not relocating citizens. Oh, no, I was I was thinking more of the. I mean, because one island needs to be, the people there needs to be lo right. re relocated. Accord, like um, was told by what's his name, um, Jack Niedenthal about um, the people on the island of Kule, how the salt water killed everything there, like plant the water so table. It smells like dead swamp, right, right. And it's really, it's just not healthy for anyone to be living there. So they're thinking of mass relocation in that mm. terms from that island for now but i don't know when that's happened i think they're still talking about it to this day but yeah there's sure. there's one office that i know it's being it's starting to spring up all over kofa yeah that's oim i think that's what it's called office of immigration okay. and management something like that and that office is getting big I -O or iom something like that immigration something i'll look it up but they're Basically, what they do is they handle migration patterns, and then they try to figure out where people are going, get all the statistics together. And I'm not too sure how they, if they affect that or they help in the process. But that's that's difficult. It's it's case by case, yeah. each country. But then within each country, it's each district. Like you have to start thinking because also in the other islands of Pompeii and Chu, yeah, there are people islands Moving. trying to figure out how to move. And when we ask our leadership, uh, they they are trying to uh, they are trying to put something together. But I don't know. It's it's something we've never had to do. I mean, the only time that a huge number of people had to relocate were the people people from our islands of Yap, the Prefoliwash, when they went to Saipan, mm -hmm. and that was a long time ago. <laughs> <laughs> but this we're talking about all throughout Micro. It's it's crazy. You said mass exodus a while ago. It's it might pan out to be something like that in the future. Scary stuff. 
don't know. <laughs> Great topic, guys. Yeah, let's, <laughs> no, no, let's move a little. Forward. Yeah. <laughs> let's, let's move there on. was a the next. Someone mentioned Compact Impact Day. <laughs> Another great one. Yeah, Compact Impact Day. Let's get through this quickly. <laughs> wow. uh, yeah, there was a article coming out of Guam. They said they did a study, and the report came out that it was costing Guam $148 million uh, to help support COFA citizens there. This is annual, is I, it? I believe so. I think it was for year? the year 2015. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. And it used to be maybe 10 years ago, 2005, it was 40, 40 million, and then it just shot up. Wow. In, oh, wow. What do you guys have to think about that? What do you guys have to say? <laughs> Compact impact. I don't know. I mean, yeah. We really have to, we kind of, you know, when we talk about Compact Impact for Hawaii, too, like where mm. are they getting these numbers? And is it really. It's always that. Much. That's a good point. Like you, you have to always be skeptical when a government decides to look into its own finances yeah. and they decide that an outside group is affecting them. You know, and we have a, like a, a neutral a third, like, party. Yeah, third party looking into the, the numbers. This, to be fair, to to add more to this, the, the article said it was an unaudited uh, number so they haven't really looked into the number yet they're just that's the first first draft of the report 148 million so yeah you're right it's uh should we be skeptical sure but also be fair be yeah. fair like um, we shouldn't be blind to the the fact that we are costing yeah. all these there is territories fact, yeah but i think what this article especially needs to avoid is that like whole footing the bill no yeah. um what is it like voice mm -hmm. yeah. That, yeah that's a good that's a good point also because they talk about compact impact aid right so they but a lot of the articles that come out from from those from sources or those sites they they rarely mention that it's because we're already impoverished to begin with and we're running away from all this poverty Right, and we're coming here because we're sick. We're we're poor. We don't have all these resources, so they're trying to find a solution to when we're already here. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. But then, not a lot of people are trying to find a solution for at back home. And to mm -hmm. be fair, that's that's something that our governments have to look into. Yeah. You know, that's that's our responsibility. We have to step up to that. Yeah, but it's all it's also good to mention that why are we coming here in the first place? You know, that's. It's a symptom of a different problem. Yeah, that we really need to look at also. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mo the most of those governments are going after compact impact aid, trying to get funding to help the ones that are already here. But there are some politicians in the U.S. that are trying to figure out if they can help us at home, so that we don't have to, to come, come out yeah. here. And and of course, our politicians also are trying their best. But do you think that's the solution that we really want? Like, fix, help us get to a level back home that we don't have to come out here. I have to think about that. I mean, in a way, they've been doing that with us for a very long time, but look where we are now mm. still. We don't have the. That's like, very, we don't have the Alice's machine back home, right? That's, we, that's a that's a great question. Go ahead. <laughs> I heard there's one in Pompey. I'm not yeah. too certain about it. Uh, I think Palau has one. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know about other places. When you're thinking about us going back, like we have to also ask, what are what should we? What are we going back to? Right. I remember I spoke to one politician. I'll keep him anonymous, but then I asked him. Uh, is it fair that we? Is it fair that we are complaining about our leadership not standing up, not giving us what we need, so we have to run away from our countries, right? And how come you guys haven't stepped up to help us out here? We're fighting discrimination and losing health health healthcare coverage, and then that person said, "All you have to do is go home. There is a healthcare plan. It's to eat local foods, <laughs> <laughs> eat local foods, stop eating canned goods." You don't have to worry about 
all your taxes, all the insurance, or all these, all the money, everything will be provided to you as it was provided to our ancestors. I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> that was a straight answer from a politician. This was a while back, but that answer s still resonates with me. It still stays with me. I mean, Social Security is uh, drying up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, but yeah, you have to ask that question. If we do go back, what are we going back to? Yeah, not enough jobs. Schools are aren't very good. Uh, we don't have enough uh, a good diet set up. You mean like the reason why everybody's coming? Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Solve the solve the out migration and then you know repatriation or whatever. Yeah. So I don't know. It's <laughs> these are some very depressing bleak. Yeah, thanks. Just <laughs> another thing I just, just thought about about the whole compact impact. Um, are they counting COFA uh, COFA migrants who are also U.S. citizen into their impact? What? They shouldn't. But are because they doing that? I don't know. I don't think they are, but they shouldn't. I don't think they should because they're American citizens yeah. now. What if but they're then dual they citizens didn't. like the kids? Oh, until they hit 21. Yeah. I don't know. We have to look at that. Read it. <laughs> but I remember they said, no, they, they, they're they not. Because the, the numbers they have for population of COFA citizens in Hawaii is it's too small to have included all the kids. I think it was 20,000 or something. No, wait, that's too much. 12,000. Whatever. <laughs> Anything else you want, just want to add? Compact impact aid, compact impact costs. I just hope that the whole compact impact thing won't happen with like Oregon and mm. Arkansas with all that coming up in the future. Right. And that's uh, that's the federal government not keeping their, their, their promise. The deal. Yeah. Russell, anything? No. Should we move on? Sure. Okay, I think that's that's all we have for uh, news. There is something going on in North Korea, but we'll wait a little longer to cover that. Now, what's yeah. going on? <laughs> so now let's get to uh, the second half of our podcast. We wanted to take some time to talk about the videos that we've pushed out. Yes. Mm. More recently, the we had we had the amazing honor to have interviewed the Honorable Tony De Broom of the Marshall Islands, former. <laughs> Yeah. Um, you want to lead start. us into this? Yeah. <laughs> um, first, I think we need to apologize for yeah, as a, the stream wasn't live. We had some technical issues. I don't know sweet. if you could see it on my face, but behind the camera, these guys are really scrambling. <laughs> um, they're in the room with me the whole time, and they were trying to fix it um, for a good, almost all of it. <laughs> the entire interview yeah, yeah. yeah so really sorry we really wanted to have those questions come in and just have you interact with us live it would it would have been really fun and groundbreaking for for us but yeah um at least it captured <laughs> at least it recorded yeah yeah, yeah. and so we were able to important. put it out for everyone to see too so it wasn't a complete um, disaster yeah. <laughs> but um just it won't be the last attempt. Yeah, we'll, yeah. <laughs> we'll perfect it. We We're made sure it. that this is streaming right now. But um, there was also <laughs> some like um, streaming issues. Anyway, just from our um, our viewing it mm. each other, because um, I guess both of our, of our connections weren't weren't um, ideal. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. And just the shooting conditions. So there was like a lot of behind the scenes stuff that maybe some people could catch on to maybe they didn't but there's that but overall i really <laughs> it was a great honor i was really blown away by um, mr devon like he really impressed me like um sammy kept saying that he's like a really big fan yes <laughs> and I, I can't really see why because i've never spoken to him before i have never uh, seen too much of his stuff i read a lot about him but mm -hmm. i've never seen his speeches and stuff and it was really he was very well spoken and funny 
Yeah. Very um, engaging. But I gotta say, like, from my where I was sitting, there was a lot going on. Yeah. I kind of felt like I wasn't hundred percent there. <laughs> <laughs> Cause like I was trying to ask the questions and listen at the same time, there was some stuff behind the camera going on. Yeah. And, but yeah, that was my takeaway. It was a really big honor. One, two, just the whole technicality of it was a lot. And if I seem nervous, it's because I kind of was. Because you, <laughs> you were. <laughs> there was a lot going on, but um, yeah, Mister Devon was really great, uh, gracious, and. You know, he had fun with us too. Uh, there were some moments before and after the actual video that we got to just talk story and right, right. not be so formal with each <laughs> other. And that was really exciting. I really wish some ice breaking time. Yeah, right? I really wish we had more time. Uh, we got cut off. Or we had to. Sh we had to stop early. Mm -hmm. We had to. We didn't have a lot of time in the room, and we almost got kicked out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but. Yeah, I so if it, if it seemed like we, we stopped early too, it's because we, we really wanted to keep going. Yeah, there was a lot going on on the other side of the camera. And we had yeah. more to talk about, but yeah. uh, there were some other yeah. issues behind the camera too again. We still had a good five questions on... And I, I didn't know that we weren't live, so I was kind of waiting for the live questions to a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> But uh, they never came, and yeah, there was some stuff we had to cut off short. But I got to ask him which Sakawa was the best. Oh yeah, <laughs> so that was fun. <laughs> he didn't get to answer it, though. <laughs> oh, that was a smart answer, though. <laughs> Political kept, answer. Yeah, yeah, kept all these uh, titles <laughs> there. Yeah. Uh, what did you? Uh, it was a uh, very exhilarating, just the opportunity to, to interact with uh, with the man. Uh, a great man in history. He was very emotional, and I've I've seen a lot of his interviews repeatedly. <laughs> and he does have a very um, his style of communication is it's uh, it's familiar. It's very familiar, and it's familiar with uh, an older generation of Micronesians. You know, mm -hmm. it's very familiar, like. Like other people that I've that I've had conversations with that were like that are the older older men and even the ladies, the older ones. It's very uh, it's very warm, it's very interactive, and it's very personal, you know. And then that style of communication is is one that uh, I don't know we, we take for granted, and it's difficult to find that anymore. It's very uh, engaging. I, I don't know. There's so many adjectives I can throw, <laughs> but it's okay. That this person. Yeah, it's uh, I I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, the first half of the interview, I was sweating a lot. <laughs> I was extremely nervous, <laughs> although I was. But you know, when 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 you rewatch the video, the rewatch value is extremely high. Mm. You'll learn something different every time you watch it again. He he dropped a lot of pearls. Yes, there's yeah. there's so much wisdom and knowledge there that, like, and he just got it right off the top of his yeah. head. Like we didn't give him the questions beforehand, <laughs> right? We just threw a question at him, and it you was know, like, like some of the da, stuff da, da. he said, I was just so like, wow. Like, yeah, like wow, he answered like, it. I didn't, I didn't know how to reply to him. Like, <laughs> yeah, whoa, that yeah, was like pretty um, amazing. Just yeah, there's just so much. What, what so was much some there. of the things that that I took yeah. away from it? so much um the one that he mentioned and I, I think a lot of people will share the same feelings with me is when he went to ponte and he heard a uh, ponte and chief um, right. yeah his the, the line was every modern every modern problem has a traditional, traditional solution. solution right <laughs> and then that like i got like chills <laughs> I think I, when he said that like something switched I know it's like we uh, kind of shifted gears a little bit. Honestly, it's, and that was like in the beginning, I think. Right, right? like the third or the way of the whole interview. It it really elevated the way I looked at traditional knowledge because, uh, to be absolutely honest, I've always traditional knowledge since I've been growing up has always been like in the back, like that's second, secondary. It's old to yeah Eastern to Western knowledge. Like mm -hmm. that's the way we should be thinking. But then 
over time, like as I've started to like see other things and learn all these other things from such great individuals, like that statement rung true and and to hear him actually say it right it like it echoes in my brain <laughs> like, like and it's it's quite amazing and i could i could keep going <laughs> like i could keep going but i'm gonna let's, stop let's give you a chance to well you guys kind of all talked about it already <laughs> but <like> yeah. <laughs> well my i guess i had the same reaction to when he talked about uh, to every modern problem there's a traditional solution i think mm. that was a big part that really stuck with me and um i really didn't see the side of tony de Bruyne, like the way we saw him during the interview i was very intimidated prior to the whole yeah. interview <laughs> started because of the way he you know presented himself on um, throughout the the news and interviews that i've seen but then after actually getting to know him throughout um before the interview started, it was very, like, kind of, it, it kind of, you know, relaxing mm -hmm. in a way that he's very down to earth, very laid back, chill, and um, yeah. But the other than that, I was just really worried. Everything, if everything was working accordingly, you, you want to talk about a little bit, just so maybe if people back home want to try, like how we did the interview. The setup, okay, it's just like the technicality. Like, it's okay. a secret. <laughs> <Just> magic. <laughs> I mean, that's another because like, I mean that's what we want to do. I want people to be able yeah. to. Use yeah, I think I think we promised uh, like our followers that we tell them how we do everything. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Also, you know, if you guys want us to do like a behind, behind the scenes mm -hmm. podcast, like when we do when we actually do some kind of shooting or stuff, mm -hmm. we can mm -hmm. definitely do it. Mm -hmm. uh, just let us know. We probably set up one of these things, or, but. The way we had the whole interview set up was we had a webcam, this, the same one we're using right now. This mic is capturing audio. Um, the audio, so Russell was using this mic. And uh, this laptop here was doing all the work. We had a monitor hooked up to this so computer so that he can see Mr. DeBroom on his end, and I can see what's going on on my end by mirroring the display. Yusu is actually switching the one switching. Um, between yeah, mm -hmm. me and Mr. If it wasn't a good switch, please <laughs> forgive me. Uh, but we also had um a split audio splitter so that all three, four of us that was there that like, can hear yeah. the conversation so we know what's yeah. going on. I had earphones on. Yeah. I don't know if you <laughs> noticed. Um we had our headphones and also, you know, I was monitoring the social media side of things so i had facebook open i had twitter on my ipad on my i saw it was all of that everywhere on the too so yeah. everything he was looking mm -hmm. at came up on my screen too so we had a little i was a little distracted <laughs> yeah i had to make sure i saw what what was going on he had to see himself so we had to kind of share the monitor might be was a little distracting but you know uh, we're still perfecting our craft yeah. here it was difficult since it was a live stream there's there's room for improvement, yeah. but I feel like from where we started One like hell all of a those start. years ago. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. I'm talking about like way back when yeah. to where we are now. When we used to paint our interviews. Like even our <laughs> light kits, they're made out of PVC pipes. Yeah. 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 PVC pipes and plastic yeah, bags on plastic the lights. bags and lights guess, that we bought from Walmart. I guess we'll do a how to like down the road. How to TFB. Yeah. How to TFB, yeah. <laughs> um you guys don't really need expensive gear. You can do it, yeah. Even with your phone, phone. if you wanted to. Phones these days can shoot HD um, footage. So people ask us if we're a nonprofit. We're a no profit. Yeah, nonprofit, <laughs> no profit. Just. But okay, uh, back to the video. <laughs> back to the video, Mr. <laughs> Debrum. Yeah. I don't know. I, anything else you guys wanted to share? I the other thing that I really really liked was um when he was talking about Jeraman mm -hmm. and just yeah. that whole relationship and how the two words like I was right like, man this guy's so cool yeah. <laughs> I want to be like him when I grow up but yeah thanks again so much to Mr. Debrum and uh, the TFB RMI oh yeah yeah Milan the crew and oh yeah Kathy, yeah. Hillary. Uh, there were other people on the other side too that was helping us out. Right. Yeah. So it wasn't just us. 
There's a <laughs> lot of people to think. Oh. The people that own that house uh, <laughs> pay for the internet bill. <laughs> Actually, uh, we also gotta say um, a lot of thank yous. I, another big thank you to Mr. Devon because he had some other stuff going on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Some news that maybe other people might not have decided to would have decided to not do the interview on you, but he decided to mm -hmm. sit yeah. down with us anyway. So yeah. Thank you very much again. Should yeah. we end? No. <laughs> that was a really no. good interview. I hope yeah. we yeah. get to do more stuff. Like I really want to talk to him again. Yeah. That, I hope we can do another. Yes. I hope we can do a, a in-person interview. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. like I just want to hang out with him too because <laughs> that was really fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> All of us were from Xavier and he, I guess he, he really liked that. He enjoyed that connection, mm -hmm. yeah. We'll have Sakal when he comes on. <laughs> you gonna no, not strain me. it though? <laughs> I can't do it. Okay, um, I think you're gonna talk about the glass. Yeah, I'm oh, still trying to think of things to say. <laughs> no, it's okay. okay no. Just, no, just I think, remember, just throw it in there. <laughs> yeah, if it comes back. Uh, but we did, we also did another video uh, a few weeks ago. Right. It's a Hawaii news bias, yeah. retelling history, uh, segment one or part one. Yeah, um, pretty much. You guys can see that. We'll have it in the link. It's a short three minute. Clip. Yeah, I think some of the, our viewers may know it as retelling history prior to um, yeah. the Hawaii bias part because we added that later on, on like a couple, like a, couple, a week or a week after we release a video, I think. Yeah, the whole front part of the time. I think that's kind of getting lost in the video though. Yeah. That is the first segment about a, a bigger topic right. of yeah. Hawaii news bias. And we're just introducing this idea of this history of colonization. Right. Mm -hmm. and, and history in general. Yeah. yeah. We're gonna have history. another um we have another project lined up for yeah, retelling yeah. history. That's right. Uh, but this one is just the first about retelling history. Yeah. So I yeah. think we kinda because we're working so closely uh, right, yeah. with these two projects, they kind of intersect right here. Yeah. I guess one way to look at it is there will be a spin-off. <laughs> yeah. So we'll have this Hawaii uh, news bias, and then it'll spin off into retelling history. And we'll try to cover... It's been really resonating with a lot of people. Though, yes, yeah. it has. Um, <laughs> the style of the video is it's short three to four minute clip. It's It was... It was done that way so that you could take in as much information as possible in I such guess, a short time. Yeah. yeah. And uh <laughs> you know it, it, our viewers probably know, but it started totally different. Yes, it did. Yeah. yeah. We we went through different versions. We shot one where different I was just personalities. Sh shouting at the camera and it was uh angry. Yeah, <laughs> we watched the footage and we, we threw it away. Yeah, we said that's not how <laughs> that's not how we should approach this. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's we tried to infuse some little bit of humor, mm -hmm. yeah. But tell you the facts. Right. Our first retelling, I, I think we had a good number of jokes that we had to strike out of there. <laughs> multiple characters and multiple personalities. Yeah, it was getting. <laughs> <laughs> but I think we we landed in a good spot as far as the character. It's it's retelling history is pretty much the same history that you've probably read in a textbook but with a different perspective our perspective yeah the the people's perspective yeah. <laughs> insider I, I think we should mention though that a lot of the script was your writing I well just... the writing is <laughs> is from every person that we've encountered that had something to say yeah. about our history we've had a lot of meetings about it and yeah Talk about how we wanted to talk. Here. Yeah, this this project started years ago, and it was always an idea that we've had, and we finally just decided so like, to just do it. I think yeah. we were bored one weekend. <laughs> no, <I'm just> kidding. <laughs> no, 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 but yeah, it's like like what we say about all our projects. It's uh, we're we're not the best people to tell this history. Right. We're not the most capable, but we have the time. <laughs> We're so the we'll only ones it. right now. Yeah, we'll do it until someone better comes along and does it. 
does a better job. And uh, yeah, this will this will segment into other points of history. People have been asking me like, what's the history of racism in the islands? What's the history of migration? What's the history, specific history of the Spaniards, the Germans, the Japanese? And then all these other groups, history of traders, history of missionaries. There's a lot of history. There is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> like some people say, would say like, how can you teach a course on Micronesian history? Shouldn't that take just a week? No, no way, no. man. That's, <laughs> that can... Don't sell yourselves, yourselves short. Yeah. <laughs> and we have our rich history, guys. <laughs> yeah, you guys want to reflect the video specifically, the message of the video? Sure. Yeah. I, well, I think... Wait, I mentioned it because it was part of the, the bias. Right. Right. And why, why are we talking about a history of colonization? Why news bias? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, yeah, I think, and I think that's part of the reason why people are confused a little mm -hmm. bit. And it's because it, one, it has to do with that labels, the labels. Right. Yeah. Because it's in the past, we've been getting all these different labels. Right. Yeah. People seeing who we are and what. People telling us yeah, who we are. Yeah. yeah. And then, we're gonna try to link it, or not try. We do link it. Mm -hmm. We we've, we kind of have it written. Right. Yeah. Um, so in, in the news, they refer to us by these names and new labels. Yeah, new yeah. labels. <laughs> so that's part of the label. Yeah. And, and then just coming out of that history of colonization, coming over here. Right. It, it kind of. I'm, I don't. I don't want to say explains why things are the way yeah. we are, but. It, it gives some context exactly yeah. to our kind of our situation yeah. being in Hawaii. And that's why we wanted to start there. Um, there's still more, a lot more, and we're still working on it. But we wanted to put up this video as soon as possible. Yeah, just so hmm. one to just get it get it out of us. Right. And then two, just to kind of ga gauge to see how Our interesting, audience, yeah, how people, interested and people are. Yeah. I think people are interested. Yeah. So now I like I think it's really invigorated us to really want. Right. It, it's resonated so well with the public, and it's you're right. It's invigorated us to continue to write, continue to script this out, and plan ahead. Yeah. And you mentioned the there is that history that leads into what's going on right now, and this this project there was a there was a point where. We started reading Hawaiian news and watching Hawaiian news, and this is not all the news stations. Right. These not all the media outlets. Just a specific few that we will mention okay. later on. That they started. Let me explain it this way. You ever read an article that says Kofa migrants under the Compact of Free Association can enter the U.S. visa free? Period. Right. They simply copy pasted that paragraph into every article that mm -hmm. talks about Micronesians. That statement, with that statement, that's their way of explaining Micronesians, the entire Kofa migrants, right? And the agreement behind. Yeah, yeah. So if if it's explained that way, the compact is a form of charity. It's a form of aid, right? But the compact is not a form of charity, right? It's a treaty. It's two-sided. The other side of it is complete military access. Right? There's a history of uh, nuclear, uh, a nuclear That's, history yeah. there. Yeah. Like, and then they fail to explain that that treaty continues until today. Like, they still have complete ac military access to our waters and our islands. They have a say in how our funds are being distributed. Mm -hmm. And I think. Uh, Jojo explained it really well. That yeah, day. he said, "Um, the Kofa agreement is a relationship." Exactly. And he, this was his quote: "If I'm not mistaken, you need two people to be in a relationship. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean, so at it's, least it's two people. At least. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, <laughs> you know, it's not a completely one-sided yeah. thing. And yeah. yeah, believe it or not, like a lot of us." especially the younger ones like, I don't think they don't even know what the compact is or yeah even our own people don't really under fully understand what the compact is all they know is that I think because of Hawaii news all they know is that we we can come here visa free yeah and a lot of them don't know about what happens back home yeah what does us get in return yeah, yeah. but that's not to to be fair and 
it's uh it's no it's not their fault yeah it's, it's because not. we don't learn about that stuff even when we're at home we don't have a class on uh, COFA Compact, agreement yeah. or something like we don't get taught that do a whole college course on that dude <laughs> yeah i know it's um but that's it it's retelling history it's it's us taking a shot at telling our own history yeah because we've had this string of outsiders and foreigners telling us who we are let's cool that's good and yeah we're not trying to say you guys did it wrong some maybe but <laughs> a lot of it is good stuff but let's take it and then let's add a different spin to it a different perspective i was just gonna say um is there there was that one line oh in the video yeah me personally there, there's a one line in there that i in retrospect I, I i i don't i think it was a bit of a mistake to have included it but today i think it's a mistake maybe tomorrow i think it'll be good that it's in there but the line was uh what do we get in return a few dollars and visa free access to the u.s that's a little unfair and it's it's generalizing the COFA agreement so i found we found ourselves doing what the news did, did. Yeah. Yeah. like generalizing the the, the COFA arrangement and then i think that was just kind of like emotions and hyperbole. that was emotion yeah but if you ask different people i think there's a clear there would be a clear slice like right in the middle 50 percent of people would agree with that and the other 50 would probably say no that's not completely yeah. fair because we are still responsible for a lot of the problems going on back home. we shouldn't just point in one direction um you mentioned reactions you want to talk about some of the reactions to, oh yeah to, um to the video sure uh you had a quote you wanted to pull from yeah um so we do read your guys quotes <laughs> quotes yeah, on all comments. seven of them <laughs> So, Facebook, um, YouTube. When you guys share we... share our videos and people are coming, and one of them was from. Sorry, let me just get this name. password. It was from Edina Ludwig Palmer. Do you want me to pull it up here? Yeah, or? could you put it up on the screen while I read it out loud? Let's see. Uh, I'm here. just gonna start reading it. She said, "As a Micronesian watching this, the first thought was." That, that comes to mind is that we are all the sum of our decisions. I know for a fact that most will watch this and react with anger, blame, entitlement, or just with a heart of offense. As people can decide to respond. Interestingly enough, the major point that was brought up in this short clip was foreign intentions and designs for Micronesian dependency on the US dollar or government financial aid. Let's talk about this. All right, let's talk about it. Yes, that was, <laughs> right. that was a really good takeaway. And Great quote. Yeah, I, I think, I think that's the kind of stuff that we, mm -hmm. we were hoping to really. Yes. I mean, there were different reactions that we were yeah. expecting. Right. Yeah. But I think that was the ones that we were really hoping for. Mm -hmm. People that wanted to engage and talk, and you know, like, not just point fingers and stuff. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. It's um, when we were scripting that this piece out uh the the way that it's structured is it's supposed to elicit emotions it's supposed to to bring out some of your feelings and to actually hear some of the words that we've been thinking someone actually says it right but it, it's not man i have to be careful what i say <laughs> uh, man i think i i i like that the comment pointed out the very heart of the video of this first segment and that's uh it, the foreign intentions and design for micronesians dependency and that can be explained in the solomon report mm -hmm. and it's um uh, that the entire video centers on that idea that there was a design for dependency and although we're not saying, oh, see, because they did it. <laughs> That's why all this stuff's going on. Uh, the first part of that comment is absolutely correct. We have to first recognize and realize the history, the pattern of uh, discrimination and the intentions that they've had for us. And then we have to do something about it. It's not enough to discover these things. The second half of it is to do something about them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this 
the first the intro of this video is to bring people to together right to bring people together to start looking at it it's 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 basically a trailer <laughs> to, to the rest of the video because the rest the entire body of the video will try to break down a very specific form of discrimination in Hawaiian news right. yeah <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, just for people not really knowing what we're talking about Hawaii news now. Um, oh yeah, we we mentioned in our earlier podcast too that there's one of the projects that we've been working on. It's one that we had worked on previously. Uh, we spoke at Richardson Law School to a lot of people, a lot of lawyers. It was a peace day talk, and they decided their topic was about um, Micronesians. And they had invited us to speak specifically on um, news discrimination, yeah, or bias, bias yeah. in the media. And when we talk about it too, it's not like overt, explicit racism or discrimination. It's sometimes implicit, Most unconscious. Of the time, yeah. So sometimes it's not with intention. Yeah, not yeah. on purpose, but it's still discriminatory. Yeah, it is. <laughs> and and quite frankly, that that's the. That could be at most times the more dangerous one more when you don't even know yeah. that what you're doing is is Just. hurting people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of where we're doing that. Mm -hmm. so just remind me, like, we have two separate projects: mm -hmm. the retelling history, yes, and, and Hawaii. Hawaii use discrimination. The retelling history is, I think it's gonna be fun. Yeah. <laughs> I think it'll be fun. It's well, uh, this new format. I think we have a lot of fun with, and I think our audience, yeah, will like it. And we, Dare to be bold. We'll, we <laughs> might say some things that'll be very contentious and not, you know. You know, when whenever we shoot these videos and like whenever it is just me on the thing, like I I, I kind of think like, well, is this gonna, what is this gonna do? But then I'm just like, eh, to your career, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody knew me before this. So. Mm. <laughs> now he's the label guy. <laughs> <laughs> Hopefully, we can um, push our content. Soon. Well, I gotta say though, yeah. uh, it wasn't all good comments though. Like we did have yeah. some criticisms. We heard them. Um, what were they? Some more technical. A lot of them. A lot of them are technical. We we realized that it's not a perfect mm -hmm. video. Um, we had a lot of technical issues with our videos. So <laughs> yeah. That day was something else. I can't remember all of it. Uh, but yeah. We'll improve those. Um, mm -hmm. We're gonna try to balance the video, the videos, so it's not just one-sided. Yeah. Oh, fair. Yeah. You talking about the retelling history portion or any of them, really? <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, I think the Hawaiian news one will be very biased because uh, it's it's mainly. The Hawaii news, the media outlets have been telling one one side one of the side, story. Yeah. So this is us trying to explain the other half. Mm -hmm. The retelling history, it might might it might be that way also. Like because like I said, all of our history textbooks were written by a, a different perspective. Borders, yeah. yeah. So kind of reminds me of this uh, the Texas textbooks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about the religion and the religion slavery. science yeah and slavery and just the way that they spin those yarns differently yeah I, well i don't know if we'll do the same thing <laughs> <laughs> but i don't know man it's uh, it's it's quite daunting the yeah. task is it's is interesting daunting, times yeah. for us here at tfb yeah we enjoy doing this stuff love it we must because we keep doing it for free <laughs> 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 but yeah um we have anything else i think that's all all right you guys have anything any final thoughts um i just want to say thanks again to mr yeah. devon because yeah. that was really cool i wish we had, had more time hopefully mm -hmm. we can sit down with you again and more people if people want to do their own videos like that yeah i say go for it because i really want to see more stuff from yeah. other people too so please try to we're more content viewers than content creators. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I we probably said this before too, but if you guys want us to do more like a DIY or tips and you know tricks for doing stuff like this, 
Um, let us know. We'll we'll start something. We'll try to do something. Yeah. Hopefully, something to do. <laughs> <laughs> we all like are kind of good at the you know on special the different fields of things. So, so we can all do something to chip in. You know, let me let me just do a quick run through of what we talked about, recap. and then we'll cap. Uh, Oregon Healthcare, mm -hmm. Kofa citizens living up there. Ba Looks good. Uh, um, Arkansas, Arkansas expecting migrants from the RMI due to climate change. Uh, compact impact aid. Guam had a report, unaudited report, $148 million for 2015. Yeah, and then we reviewed and talked about our recent interview with uh, oh, watch it. Tony De Broom. <laughs> The Honorable Tony Broom, the Broom, that was amazing. Please comment on them. Yeah, and then finally we reviewed retelling history, yep. Hawaii news bias. To um, oh, I forgot to mention. Go ahead. Those sites that uh, they stole our videos, guys. <laughs> we made it. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's kind of flattering, I guess. I yeah. Mean, it, yeah. Yes. <laughs> I mean, they're taking away our views, but. No, what do you guys told me? I, I didn't think about the the losing viewership. I was just like, "Holy shit! Someone stole our video. We made it." <laughs> but then I I sat down. I was like, "Oh we man, we losing. made that. Yeah. <laughs> We're losing all this viewership." But yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's free publicity, so whatever. I enjoy it. I, <laughs> I I like reading all the comments on like other other people's posts. <laughs> it's it's good stuff. It's it's just very good to get validation. You know. So just a reminder to. Our loyal fans, <laughs> um, please like our videos on our site, on our Facebook, yeah, like yeah. us on YouTube, YouTube too. Subscribe and like our videos. Uh, Twitter as well. We'll be tweeting more and more, um, hopefully soon. Um, comment, comment, suggest, please critique. Tell me how bad I'm doing. <laughs> Thank you to um, a couple of the viewers that tuned in. Uh, we had, I think, we had a. More than usual. Yeah, we had a goodly number. Yeah. Tonight? Yeah, tonight. Oh, cool. Hey, guys. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, I think this is about wrapped up. Once again, this is TFB Thinks. Um, just our opinions. Just our yeah. opinions. They don't really matter. Um, congratulations to all the commercials on the Super Bowl. Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> and uh, I think that's it from us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Peace. Enjoy Deadpool weekend, everyone. Happy Valentine's Day. <laughs> Go buy your significant other something before it's too late. We're still recording. All right. Oh. Bye. <laughs> <laughs>